it's you. No, not yet. It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood that gives me life. It's your blood that took my place in redeeming. Then the snow, then the snow, my Jesus, God's precious sacrifice. It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood that gives me life. It's your than the snow, than the snow, my Jesus, God's precious sacrifice. Jesus, God's precious sacrifice. Ambaria. Si kalaramba si andari. Thank you for healing our needs, O oh Lord. You are our master, 
In the book of Colossians, uh, chapter 3, verses 23 to 24, St. Paul says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yeah. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Mm. We ask that uh, everything that we do and say <laughs> will be for your greater glory and honor. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm excited, Bob. I'm excited that uh, um, we can do things for God's glory to have an impact. But you know what? He supplies. He does the heavy lifting. He does the adds the gasoline to our feeble engine. He fixes the spark plugs, and mm. he can make so much more impactful our life. You know, he can guide us with our family, with our business, with our church, with our country. And he can give us, you know, baby, wait upon the Lord will renew our strength. And Lord, we just, we're so excited, Lord. We're so excited about you. We love you. And we're excited about what you've done in our life. And Lord, we want to be used by you. We want to make, Lord, we know people are hurting, who are broken, who are discouraged, who are sick. And Lord, you can remedy that. And we pray you use millions of people, but we're available, Lord. Use us, Lord. Use us, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And, and now, here. praise God. Now, uh, anybody else has a word? Okay. Sorry. If, uh, I echo and confirm what Joe Szynski, what Brother Joe Szynski was saying about how um, it's it's not on our own strength. So even mm. when we're feeling weak or un incapable, but that's when God uses us. So thank you for that, Joe, because that's exactly how I'm feeling. So thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. God. And God amen. has given us the gifts. He's given us his blessings. And it's not on our own. It's his choice to save us. He has called us, not us calling him. He wants, he's given us the gifts. So he wants us to share those gifts he has given to us, not to hold on to those gifts, but to go out and share with others. It's just confirming what brother Joe had said. And also our sister, uh, Sherry, we're to share those gifts that he has given us. And again, not to stand there and wait for someone else to make a difference, but to go out and let the Lord use us. And it's not us doing the touching and the healing and the acknowledgement. It's Christ doing it. So we're making ourselves available. And I just want to say thank you, Jesus, also, and confirming Brother Joe and Sherry's word. Praise God. Thank you, thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sally. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so we have the teaching. Now, um, my teaching on the uh, Pirels of Halloween. Okay, uh, many people are busy preparing for a so-called holiday called Halloween. It will be celebrated uh, next week, I guess, uh, Sunday or Monday next a week from Monday, I think, is um, will be Halloween. Many Monday. People are, huh? Monday. Monday, yeah. Mm -hmm. So many people are busy preparing for a so-called holiday called Halloween. Many, sad to say, do not realize that Halloween is of the devil himself. It is. Is it of? It's the devil. Is it of? It is of the devil himself. 
a former high priest in the, in the Celtic tradition of Wicca, Wicca means witchcraft, Tom Sanguinet said, the modern holiday we call Halloween has its origins in the full moon closest to November 1st, the witch's new year. It was the time when the demons were supposed to be at their peak power. He went on to say, Halloween is what? Is purely and absolutely evil. And there is nothing we ever have or will do that would make it acceptable to the Lord Jesus Christ. The origin of Halloween is the Celtic festival of Samhain, Lord of Death and Evil Spirits. The Celtics considered November 1st as being the day of death because the leaves were falling. It was getting darker sooner and it was getting darker sooner and the temperatures were dropping. They believe uh, Makoela, the sun god, was losing strength and Samhain, Lord of Death, was overpowering him. The Celtics believe that on October 31st, Samhain, Lord of Death, assembled the spirits of all who had died during the previous year. The demonic priests or druids led the people in diabolical worship and ceremonies in which horses, cats, oxen, black sheep, human beings, and other offerings were rounded up, stuffed into wicker cages, and burned to death. You may ask, how about trick or treat? You know, as um, you know, that's you know, many children go out on that day and they do trick or treating, right? So the so you may ask, how about trick or treat? Trick or treat is a reenactment of the druidic practices. The candy has replaced the human. Yes, it is sacrifices of old, but it is still an appeasement of the deceptive evil spirits. When people give out Halloween candy today, they are, although innocently, they don't know about it, they are providing a sacrifice to false gods. According to Tam Sanguinetti, a former high priest of Satan worshipers, this guy, Tam Sanguinetti, was a Satanist. Okay? So, according to him, uh, they are participating in idolatry. So, when your children go out trick or treating, and I hope and pray that they don't, okay? I just hope and pray that they don't. But you have to be sure to be careful. It's all over the news that. There are people who are giving them, uh, giving those children fentanyl. It's all over the news. Fentanyl uh, candies uh, can cause death. They, uh, they comes in different colors, different shapes, look round. It's a, like a candy, you know, it's rounding different colors. And, but they cause the, the poison. So it causes death. Minutes after they eat those fentanyl, those candies with fentanyl, they will die because it's poison. So parents, you should be careful. Or if you are not a parent, you know, you know a family that have children and they go out trick or treating. I hope they don't, but if they do, tell them to be really, really, really be careful. We don't want them to be poisoned because fentanyl is a drug and they are being distributed during, you know, this and there's uh, every night the news that we have to beware, trick or treating, beware of the candies that they give away. They are from, they are from the cartels. You know, they are, they are, it's 
it's very deadly, it's very deadly. So, by the way, Halloween is the biggest day of Satan, or is the biggest day of Satan worshipers. It is compared to Christmas as the biggest holiday for Christmas. That's the day when the covens perform black masses during um, during this um, um, Halloween. That's a big day for Satan worshippers because they perform the covens perform black masses. Okay, so we have to to uh, be careful about it. What is a coven? A coven is a group of gathering of witches who meet regularly. There are, you know, by the way, these covens uh, is, uh, are composed of professional people. They are lawyers, doctors, they are teachers, they are um, office workers, but they worship Satan. They are Satan worshipers, okay? And they, it's still true until today. It's still true until today. There are reliable sources of information that the most number of covens of Satan worshippers throughout the world, huh? the, the most numbers of covens throughout the world are found close to Stockton. And you know that name of the city? It's called Sacramento. That's where the most covens are found throughout the world. All Saints Day, which is observed by the Catholic Church on November 1st is very far off from Halloween. The Catholic Church honors and venerates all canonized saints who led a holy and exemplar life on All Saints Day. A black mass, on the other hand, is performed by Satan worshipers to mock the holy sacrifice of the mass in the Catholic Church. During the Satanist Black Mass, they usually use the naked back of a woman as an altar. The Black Masses are usually performed in private, isolated, and uninhibited properties. I don't know if um, there were like years, uh, not too long ago, there was a movie that came out called One Eye Shot with um, I think Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, one eye shot. They showed uh, a portion of uh, how they performed this black mass, okay? So, and they are usually performed in private, isolated in an inhabit and inhabited properties. The Satan is still a consecrated host from a, from a, from a Catholic church. And during the Black Mass, they make a mockery of the sacred host. They urinate and defalcate on and spit on the sacred host. The Satanists also invert the statues of saints, the crucifix, and some holy and consecrated objects. They use animals and sometimes human beings mostly babies, and oftentimes very young boys and girls as a sacrifice and other sat satanic rituals and black masses. They also re recite incantations to Satan as a form of worship. They curse and pray to Satan for the breakup and destructions of families and marriages, for wars and conflicts to take place. They pray against the holy, the, against the duly instituted authorities in the government, such as the military and the police. And they pray for abortion to prosper all over the world. They pray against the Catholic Church and other Christian churches to crumble down to the ground. They pray against the Pope, against the Cardinals, the priests, the nuns, the religious, the pastors, 
and other Christian leaders and church ministers. Then they stayed sexual orgies among themselves, men and women alike, during the Black Mass. Now they also, this include those LGBT people. They perform evil things, sexual, you know, all um, um, wicked ways of sexual things, you know, orgies. So they stayed or sexual orgies among themselves and uh, during the black mass, can you imagine? And, and they recite all kinds of incantations. So, uh, you know, um, other Christian lead and let, let me see. So they, what, what they do, they do purely evil things and curse God. That's what they do, purely evil things. And they curse God as they have this black mass. They, they um, of course, as the priests recite all those uh, prayers, they also have, uh, Satanists have, have all kinds of prayers also, prayers against God. And they do the idolatry, they, they, they curse all the way up, all the way through the, their black mass. They, uh, they recite evil incantations. What are Christians to do to combat this practice of evil called Halloween? By all means, okay, by all means, do not participate in Halloween and its rituals. You know, in our case, it's been years now that we turn off our lights outside and when somebody knock on our door, we don't even open the door. We are sorry. But that's what we do, okay? So because not only of crime, because some people were masquerading as, as Dracula or anything like that, and then they rob people. So it's very dangerous. So what are we to do? By all means, by all means, we should not participate in Halloween and its rituals. Do not encourage your children to go trick or treating. Many Catholic parishes conduct masses in reparation for the desecration committed against the Holy Eucharist. Some grade schools will celebrate this day in their uh, gyms, in their schools, and encourage their students to wear costumes or attire depicting uh, costumes for saints, like Saint Anthony or, or, or Mother Mary or the angels, okay? So, um, so they will they will have costumes that would uh, not defect like Dracula or goblins or the devil. So, um, and sometimes uh, they wore costumes uh, like Disney costumes, this Disney characters, not costumes of Dracula or goblins or Satan. By all means, a Christian must educate other Christians about the reality of Satan and the evil things that he can do against the people of God. Furthermore, a Christian must also encourage other Christians to rely and focus their eyes more on Jesus, the victor over Satan. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, St. Paul says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. So how to expose them? Educate your neighbors, educate your family members, ed educate your grandchildren, not to participate in those trick or treat Halloween, because they are participating in the activities of Satan. So um, you have to tell them the truth. You might say, oh, they might get offended they might, you know, I would rather have them get offended be, rather than you be answerable to God. We don't want you one day when your time is up and you are before the Lord and the Lord asks you, have you told your grandchildren, your relatives about the evil of Halloween? Have you told them? You might say, well, Lord, I'm sorry. I was afraid because they might get offended. 
ah, you are, you are afraid that they might get offended, but you, you are not afraid that you might be in the smoking section of eternity. What is the smoking section of eternity? That's hell, right? So you have to educate. You have to educate your, your, uh, your relatives, your grandchildren, your neighbor. Okay, so uh, not only to educate, um, but this uh, Christian must also encourage other Christians to rely and focus their eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, number two, pray the rosary and the chaplet of the divine mercy and pray the pleading the blood of Jesus prayer for protection. You know, one time, one time, uh, Father Amort, the official exorcist in the Vatican told a story, you know, by the way, I, I participated in the uh, colloquium for exorcism and deliverance in the Vatican. There were 32 of us who were invited to the Vatican and I was one of the 32, praise God, in spite of myself. You know, there, were, there, there were some, there was a cardinal, there were archbishops, there were nuns, priests, and there were only like maybe a handful of us lay people there. So Father Amort was one, he, he was the exorcist of the Vatican at the time. And he told a story of a possessed woman that Satan spoke through her. And uh, this possessed woman saying that if the people of God praise the rosary every day from their hearts, Satan himself said that he, if they do that, if all the Christian Catholics or people pray the rosary from their heart, he will not even exist. That's what Satan spoke to the woman, the possessed woman. Father Amor delivered this possessed woman. I think he, he said at the time that it took him over a year to deliver this woman from evil position, okay? So we have to pray for protection for our family members and all the families throughout the world for our marriage and all the marriages throughout the world. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to stop the scourge of abortion, the proliferation of violence, sexual trafficking, homosexual acts, drugs, and corruption. St. James says in the book of James uh, chapter four, you have that commandry? James says in James chapter four, verse seven, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. One time I was flying uh, on business class going from, I believe I was going to New York from Sacramento. Across from me, from my seat, was this woman whom I thought was praying the rosary. She had in her hand, you know, I thought it was a rosary. But then I noticed that, well, well, I, I, I commented to her, oh, that's good that you're praying the rosary, you know. And she said, and she said, uh, uh, so I, I kind of complimented her. She told me that it was not a Catholic rosary. And she said that she didn't believe in it. She didn't believe in a Catholic rosary. Then I saw that the rosary has a pentagram instead of the cross. It was a pentagram uh, and the rosary. So I said, oh, oh. There, is, there is what we call satanic rosary. Do you, do you, have you heard of this? Satanic rosary? They have the Satan worshipers, they pray as the satanic rosary every chance they can get. And what do they pray? For, for um, crimes to prosper, they pray against the Catholic Church, against all Christians, they pray for the break up, breaking up of marriages, they pray for violence to, to continue, all evil things to continue. That's, that's how they pray this demonic rosary, their petitions are for 
evil and not for good. So sisters and brothers, she said uh, that uh, she prayed the rosary every chance she could get. The, the satanic rosary she prayed every chance she can get. We Christians, we should do the same to, to counter what the Satan worshipers are doing. You know, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. That I'm telling you what I have seen. I'm telling you what I have heard and what I have experienced. This is for our, for our own good. So number three, that what that we should do is we have to pray for the conversion of Satan worshipers. I believe that the Lord will hear our collective prayers. We should not limit as to what God can or will do. Okay, we should not limit that. And, um, and, and we should not limit as to what God can or will do to us and with us and for us. St. Paul says in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 5 to 7, let, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known, be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We should not give up praying for the chains of hearts and minds and directions of sinners. Jesus says in Luke chapter 15, verse 10, just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Number four, that what we should do, that we should do, okay? Practice fasting and prayer. We should keep in mind that prayer and fasting, uh, they are great weapons the Lord gave us to, to give us for victory in those seemingly unconquerable, unconquerable difficulties or hardships in our lives. When the evil one holds captive one area in our life, it tends to sap most of our thoughts and in our will to live, okay? So we should move forward. That one area can cause us quality of relationships, emotional well-being, and even the ability to enjoy life. Fasting is one of the most effective weapons that the Lord has provided for us against the wiles of the enemy. What are the wiles of the enemy? The wiles, the temptations of the enemy, the trap of the enemy, okay? Even Jesus said in that Psalm, said that some evil spirits cannot be cast out except by prayer and by fasting. In the book of Matthew chapter six, verses 16 to 18, Jesus says, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou when you fast, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that you appear not unto men to fast, okay, but unto thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which see you in secret, shall reward you openly. By the way, I am using the King James Version, okay, of the Bible. Now, um, so there are people who cannot fast because of physical or medical reasons. However, there are various ways to fast, like avoiding watching TV or refraining from using social media or podcasts or listening to music and other forms of entertainment. That's one way to fast. If you could not fast 
uh, like uh, you, uh, by using not by not eating. So there are many ways in which you, we could fast. In the book of Joel, chapter two, uh, verse twelve, the word of God says, "Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning." Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to lose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the, the oppressed free and break every yoke? We read that in from Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6. Okay. Now, number five ways. Let us. Let our actions, thoughts, and motives, and words always be pleasing before the Lord. So our acts, our actions, motives, and words be always pleasing to the Lord. In other words, they are a sacrifice. They are a, our sacrifice before the Lord. All our actions, and thoughts, and motives, and words. Okay, in the book of Leviticus, Chapter 19, verse 2, the word of God says, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. But in the coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice. Raise up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. So uh, that's from Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. So sisters and brothers, I hope that this teaching uh, gives you some ideas on how not to celebrate Halloween and do not allow your children, your friends, your grandchildren to go out participating in the trick or treating because it is the biggest holiday of the devil. And if you, didn't, if you don't tell them about the truth, you will be responsible before the Lord. You have to tell them even though they get mad at you, Hey, do not, because those candies that the, that the, that your children is getting are the are replacement for the um, sacrifices of the devil. Even though they don't think that way, but but it is like um, uh, there's a semblance to that, semblance to that, and and of and and of course the rice and the uh, appropriately uh, that the um, chances of getting the pentanel which is a form of a drug to poison the children so uh, i hope this teaching will educate some of us or all of us about the perils of Halloween. Amen. Now, now I'm I'm glad that you know that there is what we call so-called demonic rosary. You know that uh, they have what we call a black mass. What they do during black masses, and by the way, they have even you know they have in in some of the capital capitals in the uh, capital of the some states, they have all these uh, exhibits of Satan worshipers, and they say that this, this that is the right to um, to put an exhibit on Satan worship. So we have to pray against them because. Somebody says, and I remember this, that the only way that the evil can prosper in this world 
is for the good man to do nothing. Again, I repeat, the best way for the evil spirits to, for the devil to prosper is for the good man to do nothing. Amen? Amen. 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 We're all muted. Amen. 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 Yeah, yeah. I'd like to ask, uh, I, I welcome some, some question because I believe this is a very important subject. And it's coming up. This Halloween is coming up. So I, if you have questions, please uh, ask now. You know, Compadre, what's so scary right now, and I, I'm so glad you mentioned it, is that we have to be very, very careful, not just for our children, but for ourselves with that fentanyl. Fentanyl, um, yes. It's not just a candy. If you see, um, when, when we went on vacation, my little granddaughter, we were by the beach, we were sitting there, um, uh, uh, there at the, at the hotel, and um, there was a dollar on the floor, and she picked it up. Oh my gosh, I grabbed it from her, I got the wipes, because we were carrying all kinds of sanitary wipes, wiped them over. My son said, but mom, it's just for $100. I go, no, babe, it could be for anything that kids would want to pick up. Thank God it was just another tourist, I think, had actually just dropped the dollar bill. But they say even touching the uh, whatever the, the a fentanyl laced thing can be absorbed by your body, not just for our kids, but for ourselves. And, and this is a very good, another good reason for us to be very, very careful on Halloween night. Hello, not night. only for not only for saying, oh, I'm just gonna let I'm gonna give the kids my candy because my candy's good. Well, what if those kids have something as you pass it to them and you get it? So the the best thing to do is is to give glory to God. And for Halloween here in America, I think it's a good time to pass. I know my kids are are not going to to go trick or treating. Yes, yes, and so. you know, Kumadri, some people say, oh, they are neighbors anyway. We know them. For a long time, we know them. I think the candies that they gave to my children are are good, you know. But you'll never well, know. That's good. But then, what are, what about the candies they got from somewhere else? From somewhere else. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They, they might have gotten it from somewhere else, and it's not their purpose to give them to pass uh, the the spin tunnel out. But it's just a stage heard, two. It's a stage two of the evilness of what you just gave a talk. And thank you for. For doing this our annual halloween uh, talk yeah yeah but the thing is yeah you you might say oh i trust my neighbors they, they know we know them for a long time and uh -huh. their candies should be good but how about the the candies that they get from somebody else or from somewhere else they exactly. don't know that they have fentanyl and then you said oh you you you, you told you, you you tell your children it's okay to eat their candies it's okay it should be safe but beware the, the the word is beware. Do not trust anyone else for the benefits of your children, for the benefits of your family. Do not trust somebody else. Yeah. You know, and 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 uh, that's why, you know, St. Paul says we have to be discerning. We have to discern properly. So be careful, beware, yeah. especially and, and this Halloween thing. Sis Tess also gave a chat comment to watch out for the for your animals too, because they sacrifice anything human, anything living. So, or oh, just be careful with your pets. Yes, and and um, you know I've been to to um, this um, exorcism and and deliverance class in for a week long week long with Father Joe Maghine here the, yes. the exorcist in. In Stockton Diocese, and they talk about these things, you know, and 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 also about Satan worship, and there's something real. It's it's not only a pigment of the imagination; it's real. Right. Yes. It's very real. So uh, so, but the thing is, I found out, you know, it was not mentioned about the demonic rosary, but this is the term that I use because I found it out myself when I was sitting across from this woman from Sacramento going to New York, that this woman had a, a rosary, was saying the rosary, and then it was not a, 
Then I look at the rosary. It's not really a rosary because there's a pentagram. That was the, instead of the crucifix, it was a pentagram. And that's what he said. What, that's what she told me. She's praying against the, the dissolution of marriages, the um, uh, praying against the priests and the cardinals and the Pope and the nuns and the church and the churches, not only Catholic churches, but Protestant churches. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what shall we do? We should counter them with our rosary. And, and the rosary is a strong, it's a powerful prayer. But we have to make sure that we say the Hail Mary, we'll say, Hail Mary, uh, amen. No, we should pray the rosary slowly and carefully and from the heart. And according to Satan himself, that if the Christians will do that, he will not even exist. He will, it will be hard for him to exist because, because that prayer is prayer to, to Mary, who is the greatest enemy next to Jesus, the greatest enemy of Satan. Okay. Okay, praise God. So now, Jerry, we shall uh, divide. No, I'd like to ask for testimonies. And um, uh, before we do that, I would like to ask Patricia to sing the post teaching song for the Lord is my tower. Correct? Okay. Yes. the power to tear down the works of the enemy in a difficult hour he will crush the devourer and bring the powers of darkness underneath my feet for the lord is my tower and he gives me the power to tear down the works of the enemy in a difficult hour he will crush the devourer and bring the powers of darkness underneath my feet Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord most high. For the Lord is my tower, and he gives me the power to tear down the works of the enemy in a difficult hour. He will crush the devourer and bring the powers of darkness underneath my feet. For the Lord is my tower and he gives me the power to tear down the works of the enemy in a difficult hour. He will crush the devourer and bring the powers of darkness underneath my feet. For the Lord is my tower and he gives me the power to tear down the works of the enemy in a difficult hour. He will crush the devourer and bring the powers of darkness underneath my feet. For the Lord is my tower and he gives me the power to tear down the work of the enemy in a difficult 
Eiffel Tower. He will crush the devourer and bring the powers of darkness underneath my feet.